this past weekend, Casey Neistat released his documentary on David Dobrik during the South by Southwest Film Festival. This documentary has caused a lot of drama over these past few weeks between David and Jeff, so a lot of people have been dying to see it. As you guys know, Jeff was informed by Casey before the documentary aired that David had blamed the whole accident on him and pretty much said it happened because Jeff is crazy. The documentary is just over an hour and 40 minutes long, but unfortunately, if you weren't physically at the event or if you couldn't get your hands on a $500 film badge, you probably couldn't see it. Right now, there's no word on when the film will actually be released, and it sounds like Casey has to wait for a network to pick it up. My guess is that it could take up to a year to happen, so today we're going to go over everything we know so far about the film. From interviews, to first-hand accounts from people who actually went, to Casey Neistat himself. It's a mess, so let's get into it. Casey Neistat has always been known as a huge David Dobrik fan, and David has always been a Casey Neistat fan. That's why when words started going around that Casey was doing this huge documentary on David, a lot of people were worried it was going to show David in a positive light. After everything that's come out over these past two years, from the Insider article to Jeff's life-altering excavator accident, a pro-David doc was the last thing people wanted to see. But when the description for the doc was released, everyone was pleasantly surprised. It reads, When Casey Neistat first sat down to interview YouTube sensation David Dobrik, neither of them knew they were about to capture one of the most precipitous rise and falls in the history of the internet in real time. David, protected by the belief that he's just a kid with a camera, has constantly assumed risk. Even as a story of assault breaks, he's busy covering up a near lethal accident caught on film, intended to be entertainment. In the real world, these kind of actions have life-changing consequences, but in the gold rush ecosystem of social media influence, the audience decides who succeeds and who gets banished forever. So the interesting thing about the timeline for this project is that Casey was there for the entire rise and fall and he was able to capture everything. He started the doc back in 2019 when David was at the peak in his career and wanted to branch out from YouTube. By the time the article from Insider broke exposing the story of and the environment his vlogs created which allowed it to happen, Casey had already finished his documentary. Even though the tone of the documentary was set and everything was filmed, they had to completely change the story it told. Variety spoke to Casey and asked him, You had been working on this project for over two years when the Business Insider article was released in March of 2021. In the wake of the allegations, several brands that had deals with Dobrik, including HBO Max, AE, HelloFresh, Dollar Shave Club, and SeatGeek, cut ties with him. Did you have to convince David to continue the doc after the article? To which Casey said, The only time he engaged on camera after that article was released was for one final interview. It's an interview that has a very different tone from the rest of the film. It's an interview that is also peppered throughout the film and it sandwiches the opening of the movie and the end of the movie. That's where Kat Tembarge comes along. Kat was the one who broke the story for Insider and really turned everything upside down for this documentary. Casey interviewed her and used her voice as a way to narrate the dog and give Hannah a voice. Casey was able to still salvage the footage that he shot prior to the article, but instead of it being used in a more like, oh wow, David's vlogs, look at all the cool stuff he's doing kind of way, it instead had a more ominous feel to it. During Casey's interview after the doc premiered, he even said himself that since the subject of the documentary was so real and so heavy, it didn't feel right for him to go out and celebrate it. Someone on the H3 subreddit actually went to the premiere in person and they gave a really detailed breakdown of the documentary. Here's what they had to say about it. Kat had a big role in the film, providing a lot of background information as well as how she reported her story. She gave all the context for what YouTube is and the impact all these events had. Overall, it was a very well-done, non-biased documentary about everything David did in the last three-ish years. Casey got footage of David long before the accident with Jeff happened, saying, It's not fun unless someone gets hurt, while they were filming a different, less dangerous stunt. I think that right there says a lot about David's vlogs and the friendships he has. Most normal people would never want to put their friends in a position to be hurt. Yet David doesn't think a bit is fun unless one of them gets hurt. 
which is probably why David had no problem taking Jeff so high and so fast on that excavator. He's clearly not thinking like a normal person that has concern for their friend's safety. They go on to say, Casey said in the Q&A afterwards that the entire documentary was completed before Kat's article came out, but when it did, it changed everything. Casey asked David if he felt responsible for the and at first he said no. Dom's the one who did it. But when Casey pressed him, he admitted it wouldn't have happened without him. And that's true. David's vlogs create an environment where it's acceptable for them to film Dom doing what he did and not think for a second of the repercussions or how gross and how wrong it is. The reviewer goes on to say, New info. David tried to sell a show to Netflix seven months before Kat's article came out, which Netflix did not buy because they said a YouTuber could not make the transition to Netflix or that's why David said they passed. The documentary framed this as putting more pressure on David's return to YouTube because this show didn't work out. So this is really interesting, and I think the whole Netflix thing took a lot of people by surprise, but it's actually been known for a while. Back in 2018, David went on the ADHD podcast with Travis and talked about his fears with YouTube and wanting to make the jump onto Netflix. He said he was afraid that he would reach a certain amount of success and then one day people would just be sick of him and over the whole thing. He wanted to stop vlogging and take the vlog squad to Netflix. David said his agents, his managers, and his following got him the meeting, but actually pitching and convincing these people that he could make a good show was extremely difficult. David pitched a show to them called David's Frat House, and the premise of the show was going to be David buying a frat house and living this frat lifestyle, minus the schooling. Dude, I would I wanted to stop vlogging. I think it was 100 vlogs ago uh, for my 420th video. Um, 420, we, bro. Yeah, we pitched, the show to, we pitched the show to Netflix, and it didn't go through, so I couldn't stop vlogging because I literally had no other job. So I mean, the, sh the show we pitched to them was, um, it was called David's Frat House. And it was basically, it was basically, I went out and bought a frat house because none of my friends ever went to college or me. And um, yeah, basically, Basically, I, I bought a frat house on Frat Row, and it's just us going through the school system without actually going to school. So it's us competing with these frats that are next to us. That would be like real frats, and I'd surprise my friends with a frat house. And it'd just be, I mean, the frat house would be the, like the nucleus of the show, but it still would be very much like my videos where we would be going, you know, to the store, to Chipotle, out the street, to events. It'd be just like, that'd just be the, the center hub of the entire show. Netflix ended up passing on the idea, but it sounds like David pitched to them again. In the documentary, they go over David's Netflix pitch and said it happened seven months before the Insider article broke. We were in the middle of the pandemic and David's future was really weighing on this pitch. David's idea was described by Mashable as a serotonin supercut of a late night variety show, which is much different from the pitch that we heard about in 2019 of the frat house show. David's pitch was ultimately rejected by Netflix and David said they told him a YouTuber couldn't make the transition from YouTuber to Netflix star. Funny thing is, fast forward a year later, TikTok blows up and they give the hype house a Netflix show. The hype house sounds a lot like David's frat house, just with a bunch of TikTokers. I'm sure David was really annoyed when he heard about the TikTok Netflix show, especially because Alex Warren has been heavily accused of copying his vlog style. Then the reviewer moves on to the excavator accident. They said, The excavator stunt was basically just a side stunt. The main course was the skydiving. The final footage of the excavator stunt was only supposed to be about three seconds in the vlog. David fully blamed Jeff for the idea, saying he already had the footage he needed and Jeff wanted more footage for some reason. So now we can understand why Jeff has been so mad at David these past few weeks. Blaming the excavator accident on Jeff when everyone knows David puts an insane amount of pressure on all his friends to perform for his vlogs. Then they moved on to the Insider article, writing, When asked if he felt Kat's article was fair, David said no. He said it was between Dom and the girl, and now his reputation is forever stained and it shouldn't be. He said the article shouldn't have involved him so much. He then said the article was not published for the victim's sake, but so Insider could get clicks using David's name. How David really feels finally comes out. Last year, he posted that apology video, and a lot of people felt it was genuine, and he was widely accepted back online, only to turn around and say the article used his name for clicks. Jeff called him out on this too during his podcast. 
He got to watch the doc before it was released and he said how sick it was that David couldn't even let these girls speak and say what happened to them without him trying to make excuses for what happened. The truth is, if David's vlogs weren't around, those girls wouldn't have been there that night. Finally, the review says, Casey really highlighted how bad the timing was. David was trying to cover up the when the accident with Jeff already happened, but no one knew yet. Casey played circus music over this part. The final scene is Jeff and David boxing. Jeff gets in a few jabs and David jokes, I'm better with construction equipment. A lot of people were wondering if David was gonna show up and be there to watch the documentary. And Casey was even asked during an interview with Variety if he'd be there. And that's when Casey revealed something shocking. He said David has seen the film, but the last time they talked was during the final interview for the doc. He said, he and I have not spoken since shortly after that final interview, so I don't know his intentions, but I cannot imagine that he'll be there. Casey did an interview at South by Southwest and he said the same thing. He hasn't spoken to David and he doesn't even know how he feels about the documentary. I know David was your test subject. Have you been in contact with him since the filming, the last interview? You know, he and I were really uh, in touch quite a bit after that Kat Tenbarge uh, reporting, after her article came out in Insider, which was the huge disruptor and certainly the catalyst for the shift in this story. Mm. Um, but the last time he and I spoke was shortly after that final interview. He's had an opportunity to see this movie, but um, uh, I, I have not spoken with him directly about it since then. Uh, and you know, he has seen the movie. He's seen the movie, of course. Do yeah. you know uh, his thoughts about the movie, the portrayal? I think that's probably a, a better question for him to answer than. <laughs> Which is crazy because David and Casey were always such good friends, and I know David looked up to Casey, and Casey really admired David. Either Casey changed his opinion on David after this documentary and backed away from him, or David is just pissed at how he was portrayed. David released a new podcast this week, and he said he wants to give up YouTube. He said he's happy with what he's created, and now he feels like he's done everything he wants to do with YouTube and wants to move on to the next thing. What do you mean to open up? Joe, ask me a question. I'll be completely honest. Mm. Do you want to give up YouTube? Um, yeah, somewhat. Not. I don't know. I, I kind of do, kind of don't. I feel like I've done it. I don't know. I don't know how to answer this in like the sweetest way possible. There's different days where I do and different days where I don't. Like I'm so happy with the videos I've created and I made so many of them where I'm like, I've completed everything I wanted to finish on YouTube. Like I'm like really content with those videos and like that's it. Like I do want to put a bow on it and wrap it up and be like, next next thing, what else can I do? Can I go fishing? <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever it is. I don't know. Um, but yeah. And also, I'm not in the same like mindset I was before. What, like, was, what was that mindset? It was like full-blown f happiness. Even though David said he was going to use his podcast to talk about things he never speaks about, he still hasn't addressed anything to do with the documentary or even mentioned it. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below, and I'll see you next time.